What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Tactical Tortoise. My name is Trevi, and it's been a little while since this was a tea sipping channel. But, you know, I'm getting a little thirsty. My throat's a little parched. Got a little bit of a sore throat, so I think some good lemon tea, a nice full sip of that delicious steamy beverage would go great because uh, a little bit of drama in the competitive 40k scene. A player has been banned for a full year from accruing ITC points. Now that's that's a pretty big deal. For those who don't know, ITC stands for the Independent Tournament Circuit. It's the tournament series run by Frontline Gaming that accept, essentially accepts scores from almost every in-person Warhammer 40k tournament. I think a thousand points or above, I think is their cutoff. The series culminates every year in the Las Vegas Open and they give out prizes for the players that do the best in their faction or score highly over the course of the year. And it just takes the, the player scores from their top events that they participate in to determine their season ranking. Now at a recent GT, there was some uh, videotaped evidence of, I guess, player misconduct that, <laughs> that was caught by the community and uh, has resulted in a one year suspension from ITC points. Now what I'm not gonna do here is call out event and player names and <laughs> call out people directly like that, but if you wanna find the drama, you can on the internet, it's it's out there. <laughs> what I will do is talk about exactly what happened. Now in this instance, the player was at an in-person GT that was held recently, I think uh, right at the end of March, that uh, had a live stream table every round, and this player played on the live stream table and uh, ended up doing some scubby stuff. According to people who come through the entirety of the video, in addition to some dice manipulation, the player would essentially, I mean, just roll dice and then make up results. They would t choose large pieces of terrain to roll their dice behind so that their opponent couldn't verify their results. And then they would just verbally relay what they were doing. In one instance, the player rolls for a number of shots on one of their weapons. They roll a three and then make four attacks using that weapon, even though it was a D6 damage plague mortar. In another one, they roll damage ignore rolls on a unit of poxwalkers, which ignore damage on rolls of six, rolls no sixes, and only removes three models anyway. And there's a couple instances like that that are pretty disgraceful. Reportedly, the player also mishandled the wounds on their models and their CP tracking and a bunch of other stuff at the table that gave them sort of wild advantages over the course of the game. It's important to mention as well that the, the fudged roll on the D6 shot weapon allowed him to kill an enemy vehicle. So he clearly knew that he needed a little bit of extra oomph to mathematically ensure that he was going to do that and just gave it to himself. You know, if, if you need to roll the dice, don't even roll them. Just pretend that you have miracle dice in your pool all the time and you can just use miracle dice. That's a pro tip of the day on how to win games of 40k. Now, kudos to the community for catching this misconduct on the video. It's pretty shameful that this player would do this sort of stuff while being streamed with a high definition camera that could definitely see his dice. <laughs> while his opponent couldn't see the dice he was rolling, the overhead camera absolutely could. Maybe he just forgot that he was being filmed. You know, sometimes that happens to people. They get so focused on the game and considering how they're gonna manipulate their dice rolls so that they win the game. But that also means that this player probably does this kind of stuff pretty regularly. And it's important that we weed out sort of the, these kind of members of the community. Now, the reason that this is impactful is that ITC sanctioned this player with a one year ban from ITC points. While ITC did not elect to ban the player from participating, they could gain no ITC points over the course of the 2021 season, which will end in January of 2022. This is actually a pretty big deal because ITC has very rarely interceded in disciplining players who cheat, even cheating on camera. ITC hasn't really said anything about that in the past. And according to Frontline Gaming, it's not really their place to police every event that ever happened. I can definitely see their point and I can definitely understand why they would want to leave it up to individual TOs to make decisions like whether they let this player into their 
tournaments. And while I don't 100% agree with it, I think having a lifetime ban list in any sort of series, even if it's just paying lip service to the fact that you don't want those players participating, is a good thing. While it's basically impossible to enforce, ITC is just too big for frontline gaming or almost any individual organization to police all of their events. I think at least making it clear that you don't want this player participating is, is still a big deal. But... What is a big deal is that ITC is willing to do this. And I, I hope that they are willing to take such corrective action in the future. Now, interestingly, the event that this took place in was part of a regional circuit. And the player was suddenly slapped with a 30-day ban on the regional circuit, as well as a couple other penalties. They And they also had all of their prize support voided. This player's cheating did bring them to third place in the event. So it is unfortunate that uh, I guess crime does pay in this case. Although if they lose all their price support, I guess it also then doesn't. And something that I think that is very good is that the tournament circuit in question is also sharing this information and coordinating with other regional tournament circuits that are smaller than ITC who are going to be imposing similar bans. Kind of like shoplifting in a mall. If you start doing it, uh, suddenly you're going to find it very hard to shop. Now, unfortunately, this kind of behavior throws a real shadow on the face of competitive 40K and especially competitive 40K in real life games in which it's much easier to get away with scummy stuff like this. And honestly, I think the harsher the penalty on these types of players, the better. I would like to see them receive a lifetime ban and not be allowed to play in ITC events ever in the future. I don't think that that is going too far, to be perfectly honest. But ultimately, that's up to the event and circuit organizers, so that's not my place to say. I will say, however, that I think it's great that we are seeing much more impactful action being taken against these types of play, and I hope that that continues in the future. 40k sort of has a little bit of a reputation for this type of behavior, and while I'm going to assure people, as I do many times, that it is such a, a vast minority of the community that acts like this, and most of the time they get called out on their shit, it is, un unfortunately, I think, more prevalent than it is in other miniatures games. That is, uh, to, to some extent, because of the just the, the raw size of Warhammer 40,000. I mean, a larger game is going to have a larger proportion of all types of players, and scummy dickheads is going to be one of those, and that sort of just comes with the territory. But the harsher we can be to weed out these types of scummy dickheads, the better I think it's going to be for everyone. I'm hoping that we see similar administrative action from Frontline Gaming and ITC in the future. I hope that they take feedback from local circuits who have players who are well known for this type of play and can, you know, just get rid of those people, void their ITC points, give them bans, and make it highly disincentivize them from participating in the community. It seems to me that as ITC and Frontline Gaming interface more with Games Workshop, I'm sure it's a brand identity issue on Games Workshop's part where they would want to curb this type of behavior to stop their brand from being associated with it. And I, I imagine that that's sort of where this interaction is coming from. For those who don't know, over on the T5S2 circuit, we've actually implemented a lifetime ban system. And T5S2 won't allow score submissions from events that include those players. I can't imagine that there's going to be a lot of people on that list. While I tend to deal pretty harshly with cheating in the in-server events over on our Discord server, a lifetime ban on all circuit events is... I don't think that that's going to be a recourse that I use very often. But it is nice to have that available as an option and set the precedent that that is something something that could happen to people who engage in this level of skullduggery on the tabletop. That said, T5S2 is monumentally smaller than ITC, and it's, I mean, a lot easier to police at that small of a level. Like I mentioned before, I don't expect ITC to police all of their events, and they certainly can't, you know, read every player who's ever played in any ITC submitted event. But it is nice to see them taking this more direct action in this case, at least. Anyway, that's all I had to say for today. I just wanted to sort of bring up this topic and, uh, I don't know, uh, smile a little bit at cheaters getting their comeuppance. If you do cheat in games of 40k, fuck you, you're a scumbag, and I don't want you in the game. Get, get the fuck out, you dickhead. <laughs>